Hey guys, how are you going? So today I've got a Nikon D610 that's seen better days. Can I fix it? Is it going to be another repair flop? TLDR, actually no. So let's get to it. So I managed to pick this camera up for an absolute song. Well less than 10% of the retail price these are apparently still going for. Wowzers. Add on some extra for the parts I needed and I'm still not even at one fifth of the retail price. So my fingers are crossed in all places that I can get this working again. To make things better, the camera came with everything you could want, all the original accessories and an extra battery. But in saving that 80%, it did come with a camera that you have to assemble yourself. Regardless, I think I've got all the parts I'm gonna need. Well, I hope I have all the parts I'm gonna need. So let's get rid of the box and have a closer look at what's going on with this camera. It's been dropped on its top pretty significantly. I'm surprised there's not more evidence of damage to be honest, but there are a lot of broken flex cables and of course obviously the top panel is broken in half along with the top LCD. So if I'm able to get this back to a working state I will be quite astonished. These cameras are quite robust. So damage to this extent does leave me somewhat concerned. However, it looks to mostly be cosmetic with the exception of a couple of places. So this is the flex cable for the autofocusing screen. That seems to be damaged. Also the aperture sensor flex cable seems to be broken. So I'll be replacing that one as a first priority as well. The only other real evidence of this having any fall damage is on the bottom of the camera where it has a, a dent in the bottom panel which somewhat hinders the closure of the battery compartment cover but it's mostly cosmetic. It still closes, the battery still stays in. So the plan of action is to first see if there's any signs of life in this camera by chucking in a battery, refitting the existing top cover, which has the power controls in it, and seeing what we get out of any of the LCDs. So there's at least two connectors that need to be made to this top control panel. One looks to be primary power coming in and is filtered and regulated, and then going out to the rest of the camera from this three pin connector. After fitting both of these rather finicky connectors into place, it's time to chuck in a battery. And here's my candid response to what happened next. Oh shit. Yep, Lincoln, you'll miss it. That top uh, cover let out the magic smoke. I suspect there was probably a broken capacitor in there that's shorted out and gone poof. So hopefully that hasn't caused any damage to the rest of the camera. But yeah, that's definitely a no-go. Definitely not a great start either. But nevertheless, we press on. I have to go ahead and replace those two flex cables and whatever's attached to them in order to have any chance of this coming back to a 100% operable state anyway. So we'll start with those items and see where we go. So to get at these parts, I need to disassemble quite a bit of the camera. I first need to take off the bottom panel, which allows me to get access to fasteners for the back panel. And then after taking off the back panel, I can then take off the side panels, the front panel, and that gives me access to remove replace the top panel and the prism to get at that focus point screen flex cable but what do i find this one's got sand in the base of the camera what is it with me and buying products that have beach days i hate the beach i don't want anything to do with the beach Ugh. i won't know if the shutter and mirror mechanism actually are still working until i get this thing powered back up again 
but I'm surprised the mirror actually looks to be in decent condition. So the first part that I'm going to replace is going to be the manual aperture sensing assembly. So to get access to that, I'm going to have to take off the lens mounting ring. Before I can gently pry it off. And replace it with the new part. Okay, done and looking good. The next part unfortunately wasn't quite so simple. I had hoped that removing the prism assembly would allow me to just pull out the focus screen, but it's actually held in by the pentaprism. So I first need to take off the pentaprism assembly from the top of the camera, which involves a lot of fasteners, flex cables and desoldering, after which I can then remove the pentaprism and remove the focus screen. So with a bit of luck, we've gone as deep as we need to go for this repair. So now it's time to reverse all our steps and put it back together. All right, moment of truth. We have it assembled as much as it needs to be so that we can turn it on. I'm holding the battery myself just to make this as dodgy as possible. Let's turn it on. Oh. <laughs> we have life. We have life and more than that, we have operation. We are metering perfectly, or we're aperture sensing perfectly. Yes. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. These are robust cameras, but I didn't think, I, just, I wasn't sure. I just really wasn't sure. So anyway, we'll put it back together 100% like new and then we'll take it for a spin. Wow, so was that a success that I wouldn't have put money on? That's a great outcome. Another camera to add to the inventory. Thanks for watching today, guys. Please chuck us a like and a sub. It really helps me out. Catch you later. Extra little nerdy tidbit, these control dials are awesome. This is an amazingly simple yet elegant solution 
to directional sensing in a pretty much purely analog implementation using these pairs of wipers and the actual copper trace design the camera can actually sense which direction the dial is turning based on which wiper closes the circuit first it's really ingenious i really like it it's cool <laughs>